we've seen some examples of mechanical systems and how those things react in terms of physics. Let's look at circuit systems to see how electronic components react. So the first component that I want to look at is a very familiar one, resistor. So the resistor we usually denote looking like this. We have a little squiggle in the middle. It's the same sign as a spring, but we won't let that bother us since we don't have that many physical signs for capacitors and inductors. So with the resistor, we usually note positive and negative, and voltage goes across the positive and negative. The value has a resistance, and then current flows down from, pu from plus to minus. So the way that the physical or the physics equations of this are that our voltage is equal to the current times resistance. This is purely review, I'm sure. For a capacitor, we have a very similar kind of behavior. So we represent it looking like this. Sometimes you can have both of those intermediate lines be parallel. We induct or we, we demonstrate that we have a voltage potential in this direction, and if the potential is measured in this direction, the capacitance is the value C, and then current flows again from plus to minus. We denote the differential equation for current as C dV dt, which we can conveniently write as V dot, so I equals C V dot. For an inductor, we have a different thing that looks also a little bit like a spring, and then we have a voltage that we measure across from plus to minus, and then we say that a current flows from plus to minus. So it's not as pretty to write Li dot because the I already has a dot on top of it. Usually when we need to write something about an inductor and we need current to be a state variable, we'll use a value like x so that we can say x1 dot, x2 dot, etc.